welcome back to the class i hope you all are good how's going how's your videos lectures are going on are you understanding everything from it and yeah i hope you all are understanding everything from it even though if you are having like i have already told you any question you can post it you can get your answers but i'll try my best so that everything gets clear to you so yeah my dear students today what we are going to start is like in the last session or in the last video which you have seen the video is about the equilibrium i hope you all remember that what's the equilibrium is do you remember what's the equilibrium so we can see that the equilibrium is the condition when the rate of the re rate of the forward reaction becomes equal to the rate of the backward reaction that means the the uh, if we can say that the amount of the product we are getting is equal to the amount of the react reactant we are having so it's just that condition is the equilibrium and even though we have discussed some of the examples also related to the equilibrium and what we have discussed we have discussed about the equilibrium constant that if i talk about here what's the equilibrium constant that we denote it by kc and we can write down it as the concentration of the product side divided by the concentration of the reactant side i hope you all remember and all of you also got the clarity about the equilibrium constant fine so students uh, like in the last session i have told you one thing about the weak acid and the strong acid that the weak acids are not that much dissociable that means they are not 100% ionizable whereas the strong acids are completely dissociate into the ions that is called as the ionization process okay students like if i give you the example here okay the example of hcl if i give so you know this thing that the hcl is a strong acid so it will completely dissociate into h ion and cl negative ion that means if i am taking 10 uh, 10 molecules of hcl so i am getting 10 ion of h uh, h positive and 10 of the cl negative that means it is dissociated into the ions that is why i can say that it is the ionization process or the dissociation process and in this condition i am getting 100% dissociation fine now if i talk about the weak acid uh, do you remember what are the weak acids is so uh, like i have told you the organic acids or the acids which are having ph higher uh, ph higher so that are called as the weak acid for example if we talk about acetic acid that means student in the case of the acetic acid we don't get complete ionization is just that we if we are taking 10 molecules of acetic acid either we are getting two ions of h or the two three ions of h so that's how we get the ions in the case of the uh, acetic acid fine so now coming to the point of view of today's session that what we are going to discuss is and why we have discussed that ka or kb or kc in the in the last session because in today's class we are going to discuss about that how can we calculate the ph of weak acid because calculating the ph of strong acid is a very uh, like very uh, easy thing that if i give you that okay that the concentration that if i give you that the concentration of the h ion if i talk about for the hcl it is given as the 10 to the power minus 2 molar so what you can do you can directly use the formula which i have already told you that the ph is equals to minus logarithm of the h ions or the hydronium ion exactly so what it would be that is the minus log of 10 to the power minus 2 and when we solve it it comes out to be 2 that means the ph of this acid is 2 but as student as we know that if the concentration is this much so that means we are getting this much of ions in the case of the strong acid because they dissociate completely but if we talk about weak acid they don't dissociate completely so we can't take their concentration directly we first have to check that how many ions of the h we are getting from it so for that this whole session is uh, here okay so we are going to uh, study about the degree of dissociation in weak acids and the related calculations of it fine now we are going to discuss that what is the degree of dissociation and how we are going to do it so for that i am just going to show you one of the video and i hope my students will like that video okay so are you ready to see it the strength of an acid refers to the extent that it dissociates into ions when dissolved in water 
Strong acids dissociate nearly completely. Weak acids dissociate very slightly. Dissociation into ions means that when an acid, HA, dissolves in water, it transfers a proton to one of the water's lone electron pairs, and the acid anion, A-, and a hydronium ion, H3O+, plus, form. The color change of the water oxygen will make it easier to follow in solution later. The key difference between strong and weak acid dissociation is the final concentration of hydronium ion in solution. Since proton transfer from a strong acid to water is nearly complete, the hydronium ion concentration is essentially the same as the original acid concentration. In contrast, proton transfer from a weak acid to water becomes balanced by proton transfer from hydronium ion to A-. So the final hydronium ion concentration is much less than the original acid concentration. Let's view acid dissociation at the moment. So students, like uh, what you have seen till now in this video, that they are telling about the difference between the strong acid and the weak acid. So yeah, telling the weak acid and the strong acid differentiation, it's like that, okay, strong acid gives more number of H ions and whereas the weak acid gives less number of H ions. But if someone asks you that how you can say that it has the standard definition, so you can say that the strong acid dissociate completely in the aqueous solution, whereas weak acid do not dissociate uh, strongly. Why? Because to then there is the one concept of the degree of dissociation. So starting with this session, first of all, I want to tell you what is the degree, oh sorry, not session, but the video continuing with video, I want to tell you what is the degree of dissociation. Fine students, like if I talk about degree of dissociation, so Let's consider it as the acid that is the HA and they dissociate into H ions and the A negative ion. So students, degree of dissociation will tell you that how much of the uh, that how much of the uh, acid is going to be dissociated into the ions. And that degree of dissociation we donate denoted by alpha. That is called as the degree of dissociation. That means uh, that if we are taking ten molecules of HA and we are getting four mole four ions of the H positive ion, and from that ratio the we get to know that okay how that is this much is the uh, dissociation has been done and this is the degree of the dissociation got my point that how much of the acid has been dissociated and the how much of the acid has been left undissociated so the ratio of it will tell that what is the degree of dissociation and see student the degree of dissociation if i talk about the strong acid that is the hcl if i talk about talk about hcl so in that case i'm getting all of the h ions so that is why in the case of it the alpha is always one because we are getting all of the dissociation in this case that uh, the HCl is going to be completely dissociated into the H ions. But if I talk about weak acid, for example, LCH3COH, so it is going to be dissociated into acetate ion along with the H ion. But here it is not the complete dissociation because they will combine back together and form the acetic acid. Due to which in this case, the alpha is not equals to one. Alpha is not equals to one. So that is called as the degree of dissociation. Now, how it works, we'll see in the video. Fine molecular level and focus first on strong acids. The concentrated acid in the beaker consists primarily of acid molecules. As soon as they make contact with the water in the flask, proton transfer from HA to H2O occurs for virtually every acid molecule. Note the change from blue to red. Therefore, a strong acid solution consists of hydronium, and A- ions in water and virtually no HA. So student, as in this video, what they want to show is that when the HA, that is the acid, we are taking that, they are taking acid as the HA. So what they are talking about here is that when HA is dissociating in the water, so that H ion is transferring to the water and forming the hydronium ion, which you can see that this is the hydronium ion. The red color, just a second student, okay, I am having only pink here. So the red color, this is, okay, just imagine this is the red color. So it is donating, it is the 
oxygen atom so from here you can see that when the h a reacting with the h 2 o so it's transferring its proton to this h 2 and forming the hydronium ion and we are getting this a negative and see student this a negative is represented by a big green color Okay, so you can see here that all of the acid has been dissociated and giving the A negative ion and you can see that there is the formation of the hydronium ion and they are not combining back to form the acid. That is why this is the strong acid student. So what you can see here that in the case of the strong acid, we are getting degree of dissociation as 100% because they are not con like they are not converting back to the acid. That is why degree of dissociation of the strong acid is always equals to 1. That means if I ask you you, it is the 10 molecules of HA and we are getting 10 of this uh, hydronium ion. So the ratio will comes out to be exactly 1. That is why the alpha for the strong acid is always equals to 1 because they never combine back to form the strong acid. Okay, they will always remain into the form of the ions in the case of aqueous solution. Okay, please note that point that it is the condition of the aqueous solution. Fine. Now continuing for the weak acids. It follows that the acid dissociation constant Ka for a strong acid is very large. So, uh, like students, I have already told you, I think so, in the last to last session when we were discussing about the acids or the Ka part. So, it's just that we have come to know that the Ka for the acid is very higher for the weak acid because in that condition, we are getting completely dissociation and the Ka, you know, how we can write down it's the acid part and then the base part and see students yeah one more thing what i want to tell you here it is it's a very important thing right now whenever we write ka so in the part of the ka we, we never consider the solid state and the liquid state we generally consider the aqueous condition or the gaseous condition in writing the Ka part or the Kb part or Kc part, okay? So if I want to write down the Ka part of the strong acid, just a second, I'll just show you that how we can write down it. So for acid, okay, and I'm talking about strong acid, that's the Ha, H2O, and it will transfer its proton to it, and I'm getting A negative from here, so from he, here, Ka, that is the dissociation constant of acid, can be written as S3O positive and A negative, because they are present in the aqueous form, because ions always exist in the uh, aqueous form, and it is also aqueous form of the HA, and the water is liquid, so we don't write it for liquid, we just write here for the HA, that means we don't use liquid or the solid part in this because their consider because their concentration is very high due to which we don't consider it. Okay, so that's how student that the four acid we can write down this dissociation constant and for strong acid this Ka is very greater than one because alpha we are getting is one and that means we can say that it is completely ionizable, completely dissociable. Hundred percent ionization is there due to which the dissociation constant for the acid strong acid is always greater than one fine now coming towards the weak acid part now the beaker contains a weak acid as before the moment the acid molecules make contact with the water proton transfer from ha to h2o occurs but in a very short time proton transfer from hydronium ion to a minus balances it and equilibrium is reached Thus, a weak acid solution has a relatively high concentration of HA and very low concentrations of H3O plus and A minus. Therefore, the acid dissociation constant is very small. So students like if we talk about uh, uh, that weak acid part, so student what happened in the case of the weak acid that the acetate ion or if we considered any of the weak acid, so what it will do, it will give the very less H ions because that H ion will again combine with the ion and we are getting back the acid part and that's how there is the equilibrium in that condition because the ions are dissociating and that ions are getting attached with it and we are getting again the acid and due to which if we talk about the weak acid so the in the case of the weak uh, sorry weak acid i am talking about here so the ka is very very lesser than one because in this condition alpha is not equals to one alpha is also very less than one due to which students due to which the weak acids are weak acids are 
uh, that we can say that different type of acids from the strong acid. In this condition, we get completely ionizable, complete H ions we are getting, but in the weak acid, we are getting less number of H ions because they don't dissociate completely. And that is how their K is very high, but that means their dissociation constant is high. Why their dissociation constant is high? You can imagine student, like if 10 molecules is there and 10 molecules of H ions I'm getting, that is the 10 H ion I'm getting, that means it is completely dissociating. Okay, dissociation is complete there at that point. So that is why if it is if it is completely dissociated, so its dissociation constant is going to be greater, obviously. Exactly. If it's alpha is one, that means if its ionization is completely done, so it will have the high dissociation constant. But for the acids in which we are getting very less H ions, so for that the Ka is very lesser than one. Okay, so that's the condition for the strong acid and for the weak acid. Fine students, now, like in the last session, or not in not in the last, but in the this session only, I have told you that if they are having strong acid, so if the question comes that the uh, that HA is having the concentration of a 10 raised power minus 2. So it's like that student, it's always in molar. So in dissociating, we are getting H ions and E negative ions. So I'm so sorry that I'm doing it. Sorry. So yes, this is the condition. If it is 10 to the power minus 2, it is giving all of the ions. You can consider the same way. For example, if it is 10 molecules and giving 10 of all it, so that means if the 10 minus 2 is H, so it is also giving the 10 minus 2 power of H ions. And that's how I can calculate as pH, which is minus logarithm of the H positive ions. Exactly. So it would be minus log 10 to the power minus 2, which comes out to be 2. That means the pH of this strong acid is 2. And if if you remember from your pH scale that if we go from uh, like if we go from 1 to 6 it's the range of the acidic range that means lower than 7 and I have already told you that if the pH is 1 or 2 that it would consider as the strong acid but if the pH comes out to be 6 or 5 it would considered as a weak acid because pH increases but decrease in the H ions okay for acid we require more H ions. So that's the condition for it. But if I talk about the weak acid, so in this condition, what happens to it that fine H is given as the 10 to the power minus 4 molar example. But in this condition, what we are getting, we are getting equilibrium condition. That means in this condition, what we get, if it is 10 molecules, so we don't get exact 10. We either can get 2 or 3 or 5 depending upon the condition. So it will be not like that, that if it is 10 to the power minus 4, it will not give the 10 to the power minus 4. That that's why student, whenever we have to calculate the uh, calculate the pH for the weak acid, we have to use some different type of method, different calculations we have to do. And then we'll find out that, okay, what would be the pH of the weak acid? Fine. And how we are going to do that student, I'm going to explain you right now. But I hope you understand, uh, like you understood all of these things which I have explained you till now. What's the equilibrium, what's the strong acid, degree of dissociation, K is what, and how it differentiates between the weak acid and the strong acids. Fine. So now students, what's the thing is uh, that uh, generally what happens in our school that when teacher asked us that, okay, what's the weak acid and what's the strong acid? So generally students give the answer uh, that ma'am or sir, weak acid is that which gives less H ion and the strong acid which gives more ion. But if some student given the answer in terms of Ka or alpha, so that would be more impressive. Do you agree with me? Like if you're telling your teacher that ma'am, the, uh, there is complete dissociation, we get alpha is equals to one, whereas in that condition, we don't get alpha is equals to one. So she'll ask you, what's the alpha? And then you tell that ma'am, okay, it's degree of dissociation. So the impression is going to be changed uh, like uh, a lot because you know so much things which is uh, not in your books right now. It's the different part which you study for your Olympiads and something like that. But if you are telling your teacher in this way that okay, this is this or this is the strong acid, this is the weak acid in terms of alpha and K, it will be a very impressive thing. And yeah, it's good to you also that you are understanding all of these things. And I hope you are getting all of these. Fine. Now coming to the pH part that how we are going to calculate as pH. So it's like pH of weak acids. 
so students please 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 uh, look at this uh, part very carefully okay i'm considering that it's only a consideration considering that ha that i am taking a general it is that ha is a weak acid okay if it is a weak acid so it would be like ha dissociate into h ions and plus a negative ions fine and if it so initial concentration i'm taking as c that the initial concentration is c here fine so what i'm going to do is okay so starting with the initial part that okay initially and if you remember in the equilibrium part i have told you that when initially we start the reaction so we don't we just have only reactant we don't have any product formed here so that means the concentration at this point is c because i have cons considered it concentration as c okay that means at this point i am having only the concentration as c so it is c but they the product side is zero and zero fine now after some time what do you observe that there is the formation of x h ions and the a negative ion that means this is a concentration of h ions and the a negative ion which we are getting right now okay that means you can say it will be 0 plus x and it is also 0 plus x and it would be c minus x why it would be c minus x student for example this c is 10 okay and from this 10 uh, from this 10 h ion has been produced as 4 that is the 4 ions has been produce so it is four so that means the concentration of the uh, concentration of the acid has been decreased exactly that means 10 minus 4 has been that means this much has been subtracted or you can say that the, in the from this much of four ions of the h four ions has been dissociated that's why i'm writing it as ch so this would be condition after some time or you can say that at the equilibrium condition it would be okay so because that means this much of the ions has been introduced from here that it is x and x we are getting and it is c minus x you got my point now like if initially we are having 10 molecules of ha that is the weak acid and after some time if it is converting into four ions so how many ions of the ha is going to be, so how many molecules of ions is there going to be left it is c minus x only fine now in this condition students if i ask you to write down the dissociation constant of acid you know that the dissociation constant of acid is the concentration of h ion that is the product side divided by the concentration of the side this okay and i have also told you that if their concentration is given you can write it down along with it that it is the x for the h ions this is the concentration only x for the a negative and it is c minus x fine students now students what the thing you have to consider in your mind that uh, it is that in this condition the this x is very very small very small because student i have already told you this thing that this weak acid dissociate very very less that means we get very less number of h ions in the condition of the weak acid so here you can neglect this x and from that you are getting x square by c and that means the ka is equals to x square by c so you can write down that x is equals to under root of ka into c and what's the x student here x you can see x is the concentration of h ions if you are getting x in this condition so you can write down the ph that the ph is equals to minus logarithm of the h ion and in this condition what's the con uh, concentration it's minus log of x so that's how you can calculate the ph of weak acid students because you, we don't know na that how much of we are getting from it so first of all we have to check that what would be the concentration of the h ions we are getting and then we have to calculate its ph because in the condition of strong acid student what happened if it is initially 10 so at the final we get it 10 we don't have to see anything but in the case of weak acid as the dissociation is very less if initially it is 10 so we don't know that in the last part what we are getting in it whether it will be plus like whether it will be 1h ion 2h ion so first of all we have to see that what is the number of h ions we are getting or the concentration of h ion we are getting then we have to calculate its ph i hope you got this concept okay because we can do it by considering one of the example also fine so that's the condition now if i take one example for it if i'm taking the example of ch3coh this is the acetic acid student i hope you all know because i already asked you to learn the name of some acid like acetic acid so i'm uh, so the question says that the concentration is 0.2 mole 
molar now they have given the concentration now they are asking that what would be the ph of this acid so i know this is a weak acid so it can't give total number of it that that is 0.2 will give 0.2 exactly no that would not be the condition so what i have to see is that this is the ch3coh which is a weak acid and it will convert into ch3co negative along with the h ion now i have to tell the value of this h ion that what is the con concentration of this h ion in okay so like initially they have given it is the 0.2 that means initially when the reaction has been started so the concentration of the acetic acid is 0.2 that means at that time there will be no ions so it would be 0 and 0 but after some time that what i have observed that from 0.2 molecules there will be the elimination of x and x exactly student because after some time what will happen that either from 0.2 0.1 or like 0.001 is going to be dissociate so that is how i am writing it fine now again the second step would be i have to write down its ka ka is equals to acetate ion concentration i hope now this time you can write down the ka as it is h ion and it's like acetate acetic acid fine which is equal to now it would be x because you can see it is x and it is x fine x x and it's like 0.2 minus x you will say ma'am okay you haven't give the uh, ka so students ka will be given to you in your question whenever such question you have to do because ka is the fixed value as i have told you equilibrium constant is a fixed value but it it is different for different different reaction exactly for each and every reaction it is different but it is fixed for that particular reaction so for example if k is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 in this condition okay so now as i told you this x would be negligible so i have to ignore it it is very less so from here it would be ka x square by 0.2 so from here x is equals to under root of ka into 0.2 so from here student x is under root 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 into 2 that means what i am calculating right now i am calculating the concentration of acetate ion and the h ion and from here i am getting the h ion concentration fine so after calculating it student what you will get just calculate it first fast that what could be the x here are you solving with me na that what could be the x in this condition yeah do it fast what could be i hope my students are doing exact mehnat along with me so okay so from here x comes out to be 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 3 that means this is the concentration molar this is the concentration of h ion because what the x is it is the h ion so now use the formula that is ph is equals to minus logarithm of the h ion and it will be minus log of x and it would be like student minus log of 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 3 and i hope you have learned how to calculate the log in your mathematics class so it's just that from here solving the ph comes out to be what it comes out to be 3.22 that means the ph of this acid is 3.22 okay how we can solve it it's like logarithm is having the uh, that you can say that one property if it is in the uh, multiplication so it's like log 0.6 plus log 10 to the power minus 3 okay and then minus sign will remain as it is 0.6 and it is having the another property that this minus 3 will come here and this is the log 10 and log 10 is having the value of 1 and that's how you solve it and that's you can you see what's the value of log 0.6 and that's how you solve it and you'll get the answer that the ph of the weak acid is 3.22 and you consider that okay it's a weak acid so that's how student we calculate the ph of the weak acid i hope you all get it like first of all we have to see that how much of it is given and then we have to see that okay initially if it is 1 then after some time it would be 1 1 minus x and it would be x and x is the h ion concentration using ka formula you will find out that what is the x and then using the ph formula you will get the ph of the weak acid so that's how you can calculate the ph of weak acid and you can practice more questions over it i hope you'll get the answers fine 
Okay. So now coming to one important part. See students, like if I ask you what the condition that uh, for strong acid that uh, You'll say, ma'am, it wish to dissociate completely. That means in that condition, degree of dissociation must be high. If it is not high, so we are considering it as a weak acid. Exactly. So I'm asking you one question that what are the factors of it, the degree of dissociation? And that what are the factors which affect that there should be more and more dissociation? So what are the factors? So we are going to discuss it. First of all, it's nature of electrolyte. Now you'll say, ma'am, what's the electrolyte is? So students, electrolytes are those compounds or uh, those solutions, we can say that, which is uh, like which dissociate into ions in the solution and have the ability to conduct the electricity because uh, ions are there and due to the presence of the ions, there is the conductance of electron, uh, uh, sorry, electricity. That is the electrolyte. And in this condition, if we talk about acid, so the if there is the strong acid, there will be more and more degree of dissociation and that means there will be more dissociation and if it is a weak acid so there will be very less dissociation so that's how nature of electrolyte also depends that means if we want that the degree of dissociation should be high so if we have to take the strong acid and if we want that the degree of dissociation should be less so we have to take weak acid and that's how the nature of the electrolyte works because strong acid and weak acid both are the electrolyte but it's just that one is a strong electrolyte which is completely ionizing and one is the weak electrolyte which is less ionizing got my point now second nature of solvent i hope you know what's the solvent is in your class ninth you have studied about solution which is made up of solute and solvent so solvent is the dispersion medium that means in which we add the solute so the nature of solvent why we are considering it as see students like it's very important thing if there is a solvent which is acidic in like it is uh, converting into the ions and if you are adding into the water that is a polar solvent again that means student it's a concept which you are going to learn in your class 11 that like dissolves like that means if there is the uh, polar solution uh, that means if the solution which contains ions and if it is solving in the dissolving in any of the compound which is also having the ions so there will be more number of degree that there, there will be more dissociation so that's how the nature of solvent also work for example water water is a polar uh, polar solvent i can say because it is having a high dielectric constant now you'll say ma'am what is the dielectric constant so for now students what you can remember that a dielectric constant means that if any solvent is having very high dielectric constant so it is having the tendency to overcome the force of attraction which is present the, which is present between the molecules that for example that this h2o h2o is having the dielectric constant of 80 that means it is having very high tendency to break down the bond between the hcl and convert them into the ions and that's how we get the hydronium ions and the negative ion in the case of strong acid so that is how student if the nature of solvent is that that we are getting very high dielectric constant so we can get the more and more dissociation and if we are having the solvent like any organic solvent so it they are having very less dielectric constant so we don't get the complete dissociation from it fine now the third factor is about temperature see students like whenever we have talk about the temperature so what temperature do that it will uh, create some kinetic energy in the atoms or the molecules so the same thing will be here when the temperature is increased so there will be more kinetic energy due to which the bond between the acid is going to be break down and we'll get more and more dissociation so these are the factors which affect the uh, degree of dissociation there will be more factor but those factor uh, if i explain you right now it would not be uh, comfortable with you you will get to know in your high classes but it's just that these are the important points and you should know them right now so that's how student we consider the weak acid ph and that's how we calculate it and that's how the degree of dissociation factors affect fine and I hope you all get this topic that what we have discussed right now. It's the weak acid pH calculation. 
see student this topic is not this much only that okay you have covered all of it this is a vast topic or you can say that a huge huge topic in which there is i think so there will be no any ending exactly but depending upon the grades we have to cover like that for example you are in class 10 you initially you don't know what's the equilibrium but now you know equilibrium so whenever you are going to a class 11th and studying the chemical and ionic equilibrium you you will be very comfortable about it okay that yes i know what's the equilibrium is yes i know what's the case yes i know what's the degree of dissociation is so that's the point which i want to convey you that by studying this topic you'll come to know many new things okay and i hope everything is clear to you or if you have any doubt any question you can post on the forum on public forum as well as on the private forum depending upon your conditions and that's how you can get your answer and your queries will be uh, solved and i hope you are getting my lectures my videos and yeah if you are looking my videos and uh, it's just that the if some videos like in this video it required the it uh, like it required practice to do more and more questions so yes students i request you to do those questions fine thank you very much and yes please keep learning from us kaiyans thank you